All right, so this is an exciting one. You know, I love a good romance story. I love, uh, I love love. So that's kind of what we're talking about today. And I met Barack today, and we're talking about how finding love here in India when traveling. And I also want to tell the story of how we met, because I think <laughs> it's so wonderful, and it talks about. You know, the thing about travel, I think, is that there's so many opportunities and opportunities to connect with people in surprising ways. So today I switched to guest houses and I was moving and I had like a bunch of things. So I have like one wheeling piece of luggage. I had a bag that has stuff in it. Then I was doing laundry when I decided to move. So I had like some wet clothes tied up and uh, I'm struggling, you know, a bit. In walks, bra. <laughs> And it's so sweet. He offered to help me. And you know, it was one of these moments where sometimes I like to be this fierce solo traveling woman. I don't need any help. I'm good. <laughs> now, he was like, do you need some help? I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you. And then luckily, he walked me all the way to my new guest house. And it was nice. And we started chatting. And then tell me, tell them what you told me about how you were feeling that day, you know, or today. Actually, I came to the city to, uh, yesterday and I felt a little bit lonely. I, I was wandering, walking on, down the city, the city, but I felt by myself, didn't talk to anyone more than, I don't know, two, ten, 10 words. And, and I was pretty sad and I felt some, someone who was wanting for a little bit of company. So then the opportunity came. <laughs> It's perfect, you know, like he was in a place of like feeling a little bit lonely, wanting some human connection. And I was, I was struggling with all these bags and was happy to get some help. And then we wound up, you know, he walked me here, which is maybe like a five minute walk to this place. And then, you know, he's sweating and carried my bag up this huge flight of stairs. So of course I had to offer him some water. And then we had to have a little chat, you know, because also like, this is the thing that I really love about travel, and we're gonna get into the love story soon. The thing that I love about travel is that it helps me to realize that no matter where we're from, he's from Israel, you know, like, we're all just here, you know? We're all just people, and it's so nice to be able to help strangers, right? Like, I really appreciated your help. I was still, it's, I'm really grateful, because it's really hot here. That's the other thing, it's hot. <laughs> I was sweating even with his help. So like without his help, it just would have been a lot more miserable. And like, and and you had two free hands, you know? <laughs> so like it really worked out. And so this is the thing with travel. I just love meeting new people, not knowing what's gonna happen today. Because by the way, this whole video came about by chance because we met and we chatted. But so I love the spontaneity of travel and how you never know where the day is gonna take you. And it took me to a really good love story. So here we go. <laughs> So he, he, you were telling me that you're 30. I'm almost 31, actually. Almost 31 now. Yeah, I'll be 31 three weeks from now. And before you came to India, what I did, what no I did love in your life, though. No, no. Now, what were you doing back in Israel? Um, I was, I'm an accountant. Uh, I worked uh, for uh, Ernest and Young Israel for the last five years. Ernest and Young, big company, um, prestigious. Yeah. And I thought to myself, uh, I don't want to stay in my job. I want, I want to change to a different, to a different company or a different place. But nothing seems to click. I, I didn't really want to know what I want to do. I want to, be, to work in a big company. I want to work in a small company. Do I really want to, to stay in this occupation? Maybe I want to go to do something else. Um, I had second guess about if I want to, to, to live in a city or to live in a um, countryside. And now, and I, as far as I understand what you were telling me too, is that you were searching for something meaningful, right? Yeah. Like you were yes. working at Ernest & Young, the money was good, yeah. right? But maybe yeah. something yes, felt like... Yes, something felt like I'm not really doing something good. Not really doing something good to the world with my job. I felt like... I spend the day helping rich people become more rich. I don't really bring happiness to the world from, from, the, from my daily life. 
not not on the work side uh, for in, um, in that manner. Yeah. Um, and I decided that if I don't really know what I want to do, where I want to, where I want, where I want to live, if there are too many question marks, I need to step aside to take uh, one step back and reflect on my life and how I want how I want to live the rest of it. Yeah. So I decided to fly to India and travel as much as time and money will allow it. Yeah. And luckily if money goes far here. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's great, especially from working in Ernst and Young mm -hmm. in Israel. Like I feel like yeah, that's a nice trip you should be able to take. <laughs> and you're here for a number of months. And you met your love here now. Yes. Yeah. So it's very romantic. I also want to add something. So he found love in a way that I wanted to find love. Like I had it in my mind. Like I'm, I'm literally not kidding. So I had this fantasy. I did a 10 day Vipassana in Thailand. Now a Vipassana is a 10 days. It's usually 10 days. It can be longer or shorter, but it's a silent meditation retreat where you don't talk. And I had this fantasy that I would go to this Vipassana. You know, and I'd be like in this spiritual place and I'd be there meditating, feeling so zen and spiritual. And I'd look over and see this really hot guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was joking about this. I'm really not. Like I had this whole fantasy about like going to a Vipassana and like meeting a guy and like falling in love. And like that so did not happen for me, but. It happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to me. He's living my fantasy. And the story of me and Yael started, uh, I think, something like uh, a week after my, a week after I came to India. I decided to go to a, a course uh, that in silent, uh, we were supposed to be in silent for ten, ten days. Uh, to um, it's a, it's called Introduction to Buddhist. Uh, we had lectures and uh, meditations, and most of the time we were supposed to be silent. Um, supposed to be. Supposed to be. Um, but uh, one of the days... And I was going to add in, not only just silent, because you're also not supposed to ah, do any touching. We're, we're not supposed to touch each other. He broke that rule. I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> Spoiler alert! He broke the rule. <laughs> One of the days, uh, Yael is also from Israel, uh, so we speak the same language. Uh, one of the days after the meditations, she felt very um, emotional, and she she wants someone to talk to, and she wants some human affections that that were were not allowed over there. So she asked me for a hug, and then I hugged her. Yeah. Scandalous for uh, you know a Buddhist retreat, but of course in reality very like cute yeah. and sweet. Yeah, you know. And after the retreat ended, um, we met several. Uh, I think three or four days after. Um, by chance, right? Um, yeah, probably by chance. We we talked on Facebook. Uh, she messaged me if I'm still in town. And we decided to to leave to day after day after tomorrow to okay. uh, to a different city because she didn't want it we, we went wanted to go to the same place but she didn't want to drive all by herself for 12 hours on the bus not knowing not not knowing each other it's not really pleasant now by the way for me as a female solo traveler like i just wonder like did she really not want to go alone or did she just <laughs> did she just want a certain person's company you know I don't know. It's great either way. It, it's worked out, um, but it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so um, you guys took a bus trip. Now, how long did you actually travel to? Now we're still here in India, you know. So this is like an ongoing yeah. romance. Um, but we, so you traveled together for how long? Um, the last uh, two and a half months, I think, something like that. Now I think it's kind of funny that if you're following what's going on here, he's from Israel. He flew to India to meet an Israeli girl. <laughs> who lives 10 kilometers from him, who lives by the way. 10 kilometers from him in Israel. Um, but like they found love here and found each other here. And it wasn't always 
you guys didn't meet and were just together the whole time. You were like together, you went apart, missed each other, came yes. back. What he was telling me also, like before I set this up, you admit that you were a bit slow with things. I'm, I'm very slow. <laughs> I'm very, very slow. I think this is something that women understand that can happen. Men can be a little bit slow <laughs> with getting it, right? The women are like, I loved you like three months ago. You know, and the guys are like, really? Oh, I just, just happened to figure that out. <laughs> so that's what happened with you. She knew yeah, early she, on. She really knew very early on. And in my, uh, after the the road trip uh, to Rishikesh, we started to connect, we talked to each other, we, we started sing, singing and we, we learned that we love to sing together, especially to each other. Uh, <laughs> and, and then there was a situation that uh, we were supposed to go to different places because uh, she uh, decided she she intended to do a, a whole trip here she had a, a course that she planned right, right she around. had a very set itinerary yeah but you were a bit more flexible yeah i was very flexible all my trip is yeah oh, i'll come here That's good. i'll go there because you can mold your plans to suit her then <laughs> i don't like it <laughs> Sounds amazing. That's exactly yeah. how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what happened. That's why that's I don't right. like it. <laughs> well, so now at one point you guys were in separate cities. You went to see the Taj Mahal, mm -hmm. and you were saying it was quite yes. gorgeous. Yeah, actually, I came to the Taj. I was in Agra. I was looking at the most beautiful monuments in the world, and I was thinking to myself, this place is beautiful, but it's a lot more beautiful if you have by my side. So I decided to take a flight and uh, go to Goa to meet her. Once again, she has a very strict uh, schedule. So. But I find it so romantic that like you took a flight to see her, you know, like you were on the other side of India, but you were like, ah, oh, I miss you. <laughs> we must be together. I know you didn't say it that way, but in my mind, that's how you said it, you know. Yeah, that's pretty much what, 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 what happened. Nice. So, Goa I met Ciel, and then I met her sister and her brother-in-law, we had fun together uh, and once again we s got separated, Once now because she had to meet her mother, so... <laughs> he didn't want to meet the parents just yet? Yeah, it's too soon for me, I'll meet them three weeks from now, I think. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, things are progressing then? Mm -hmm. Things are progressing? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're supposed... You're, we're supposed to come to Israel uh, three, three weeks from now. Wow. Both of us. So uh, I guess no. we the parents, both of us. I guess I wonder though, why do you think you didn't find love before in Israel? Because you said that this is literally the first time that you feel like you found love. Um, I think she's the first person that made me feel like it's okay to be me. Mm -hmm. And most of the time when you go on dates, uh, you put on a, a disguise, you wear a mask and you don't really open up yourself. And when you do, it takes a very long time. But here in a situation that you travel and it's a very open country, um, spiritually, and uh, you find out that you need to be yourself. And I'm not sure if it's the country or maybe the company, probably both of them together, but I think I really opened up myself for the first time. And um, that's how she fell in love. And that's how I fell in love. Because mm. I, found a man, I found a woman that made, made me feel that way. Yeah. And she opened up to me. And I saw an amazing woman that I want to watch her smile every second of the day. Oh, that is just so, so cute. <laughs> okay, I'm too mushy now. <laughs> We're going to have to show her this video so she uh, knows. <laughs> okay. um, but you know, it's interesting because I do think um, there's something about traveling also uh, as far as making it easier to connect with people because I think 
sometimes, at least for me, like when I was living in LA and working in my job, like I felt so busy, so stressed, so kind of preoccupied with so many things that I don't think I felt as just open with my heart or just open in general, right? Like if I was struggling in LA, even if someone offered me to help, I'd probably just say no as a reflex just because, I don't know, like in LA, I'm just a slightly less open person, in a, or at least I was, you know, at times. So I think travel can be quite conducive to finding love. Uh, and maybe you also just got lucky and found the one. You just happened to find her here. <laughs> um, I think it's both. Yeah. It was easier. Probably if I would, would have met her in Israel, it wouldn't work the same way it worked here. It's different when you need to spend a ride on a bus for 12 hours and you can cross an entire country in six. So right. She, she probably would feel safe in a bus in Israel. Uh, I probably would be busy in work, at work. You can take a bunch of reasons. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. And I'm happy. She's happy. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's happy. Sounds like she's uh, found a good one. Yeah. Oh, all right. I love this. I hope you love this as much as I did. I just, I love a love story. I also love dating horror stories. I have to be honest. I love the both opposites. Maybe that's, I'm going to hunt, see if next time I can find someone with some like dating horror stories because that just always makes me laugh. I can throw in some of my own. I have plenty. I wrote a book and I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's Hollywood Insanity. It's about living, working, dating in LA. And I tell all of my horror stories from <laughs> from Tinder and stuff. It's really bad. Um, but so I'm going to try to find some travelers with dating horror stories as well. Let's see if they'll tell me about them. Thank you, Barack. Thank you very much. Pronounced like Barack Obama, but not Barack Obama <laughs> with the same pronunciation. This has been great. Thank you for your help today. You're welcome. And for sitting down and chatting with me. And a very, very, very nice time. Thank you. Thank you.